Okay, you guys, we have Scott Nelson with us again. On the Loans Can Be Fun podcast. On the Loans Can Be Fun (laughs) podcast. And he is a financial guru, financial planner, has tons of designations. I trust him. He's a very good guy. If you Uh, want to learn a little bit more about him, watch the episode before this one. Yeah. Deep dive into... to Scott and, and the depths of his soul. It really wasn't like that, but he told us what he does and who he yeah. helps. Um, so one of the things that I have found, I've found confusion on, and a lot of people that are around me have had confusion on, is Medicare and Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Can you take us kind of through what those are, how you help people go? Sure. <laughs> So Medicare and Medicaid were put into law in the same bill in 1965 in the Medicare Medicaid Act. So they're kind of different, but the names are similar enough that they get confused all the time. I do it all the time, and I actually know the difference, but I screw it up all the time. I don't know the difference. Well, here you go. I have someone that can I will help learn. you. <laughs> I will learn with you all, all your so, listeners. Yep. Medicaid, the aid, um, is, is a welfare system. It's a social program. It's a joint federal state program. It's available in all 50 states, but it's not called the same thing in all 50 states. For oh, example, in California, it's Medi-Cal. Utah is not very creative, so they just stuck with Medicaid. Uh, Arizona has a different name altogether, but it's the same thing. Okay. So it's federally and state funded. The rules are similar, but the limits vary depending on the state. Okay. Um, so it's a federally funded program administered by the states? Fair to say. Okay. Well, no, the states help fund it too. Okay. And... Yeah, but they but they get a lot of money from the federal government. Yeah, it's for a it? fifty okay. fifty proposition. Okay, and so it's health care. It's, it's it's so I don't have money. I can go to the doctor and I use my Medicaid. If you're yeah. approved, if right. I'm approved, if you get approved, and to be approved, to be eligible for Medicaid, you have to be broke as defined by the program. Okay, so they actually tell you what broke is, and if you have a oh. dollar too much. You're not eligible. So this actually comes into play with reverse mortgages um, because we have to make sure that people don't take so much money out of the funds available to them in a reverse mortgage and put it in their bank account because it can make them ineligible Ineligible. for Medicaid. Correct. So, yeah, we have to kind of know some of that stuff. I know just enough to keep people out of trouble that way. Do Does the limits for Medicaid change from year to year? They do. They do the inflation adjustments. Okay. 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 That's what I was going to say. I was like, I don't know if... Because yeah. broke now is going to be different than broke yeah. 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they they do. And um, in, in my line of work, we're dealing a lot with retirees. And so when you're talking about health care issues, a lot of times we're talking long-term care. Yep. And so that's usually referring, when we say long-term care, a lot of times people think nursing home. It doesn't have to be that. It right. can be assisted living or... People come, uh, can you use it for people coming into your house and caring for you? You can apply for waivers to have it done that way. Okay. It's a lot cheaper to have health care provided that way, yeah. custodial care. Um, but it's a little bit harder Get for the approved. government to okay. feel like they've got their finger on the pulse of it. It's not being yeah, abused. Yeah, probably a little easier to commit fraud and other things like that. So, so yeah. So Medicaid is is... Medical welfare. Okay. And uh, there are rules for that. And it's good to know what those rules are and how to qualify so you don't get in trouble. So, who do people talk to if they need Medicaid? Um, there are area agencies on aging that are available in Box Elder County. It's, it's done through BRAG, the Bear River Association of Governments. So usually like a, like a senior, state program. Senior centers have places they can talk to. Um, you know, we can visit with them and kind of get them Headed dialed the right in, direction. Okay. depending on where they live and, and what their asset levels are. Okay. And sometimes there's a lot of misconceptions. Then one of the things is just 
motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing is to try to k- help save somebody from an irreversible mistake. Yes. For example, we met um, with a family. Mom was needing care. It was more than dad could provide on his own. Mm. The kids were all employed. Uh, I'm sure every family has that story or something yep. similar to it. And they went to a skilled nursing facility to see about getting mom some care. And sad to say, but these people doing the intake interviews, they don't have any designation or specific yeah, training. training. On that. They're just telling what they've heard or what they've been told by somebody somewhere. Or what's on the form in front of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, you need to have less than $2,000 in assets. And so this poor guy was trying to go completely broke, less than $2,000 in assets, because he wasn't told that the community spouse, that's the Medicaid title for the healthy ones still living at home, Mm -hmm. could have, this year it's like $148,000 sitting on the table during the interview, and that won't count against the spouse getting... Oh, no, so he's trying to liquidate. Yeah, it was just sad, you know, because they don't... Um, they don't have, have enough all info. the all the stuff. So, you know, one of my designations is a CTLC certified in long term care um, designation. So we can advise people at least okay. get them on the right track. And yeah, and that's huge. And know the right people to talk to. Okay, let let's switch hats and go to Medicare. 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 I know you do a ton with Medicare. Yeah. So that is America's health insurance plan for people age 65 and older. You can qualify for it if you're younger, but you don't want to because that means that you're in end-stage kidney failure, you've got Mm -hmm. Lou Gehrig's disease, or you have been on Social Security disability for 24 consecutive months. Yikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not doing very well if you qualify for that when you're younger. Yeah, you're not trying to get there. But once you're there and you have Medicare, Medicare likes to say, they're an 80-20 coverage. And if we get right into the <laughs> math, it's more like a 67-33 mm-hmm. coverage. Okay. So if you have a really big bill, you don't want 20% of it anyway. Right. Right. You want some coverage to go with that. And so there are two paths you can choose. The one that's advertised on TV and on the radio and people are calling you every day which if you didn't give them written permission, they should not be. It's illegal. Ooh, that's um, good to know. Yeah. So Maybe just, that's how you retire. You turn, you turn those people <laughs> in. I'm just kidding. Good luck with that. I know. The, seriously. Yeah. The government digs it. They're like, yep. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> um, you can either go a Medicare Advantage route, which is essentially the government outsourcing the administration of Medicare to a private insurance company, mm. or the traditional route where you have your Medicare Part A and B, a separate standalone Medicare supplement policy, sometimes known as a Medigap policy. Okay, this sounds, I don't even, we're going to have so, to back up. And this. a standalone prescription drug plan. Okay. So I, I just realized we didn't do our disclaimers for this episode. Yeah, this is, so these are, like for us, this is not a commitment to lend. This is for entertainment purposes only. And Scott has this his own. This is not a solicitation or a, yep. um, offer. It's not advice you should act on. You should consult with a professional. And when it comes to Medicare plans, it does not cost you anything or any more money to get with a professional to have you navigate through all this stuff Yes, and help you find the plan that's best for you. Um, What else am I supposed to say? (laughs) We have new ones this year. I mean, we're, we're licensed and appointed with... 15 or 16 different carriers and 35 or more different plans. And, Let me ask you this because uh, I was a little bit confused. So when you talk about, um, so essentially like when I'm younger, I pay a monthly pol- policy, pr- you know, I pay a monthly fee so mm-hmm. that I can have health insurance. Yep, premium. Premium. So when you, like w- what you're selling is the ability for people to pay for a premium to be covered. Is that correct? Kind of, yeah. Is so, that an easy way to, or simplified version? Well, let's let's it's go through the parts. Holes. <laughs> Med- yeah. Med- Medicare comes in parts. Okay. Switch cheese. Because, yeah, you talk about Medicare, A and B, and I don't. Medicare comes in parts. Part A, 
for most Americans will not have a premium with it. Okay. Okay. You have paid taxes for it during your working life through your payroll taxes, and it is for hospital coverage. Okay. And Medicare by itself in 2024 will have a $1,600 deductible okay. per benefit period. Okay. Trick question. What is a benefit what, That's what period? I was going to ask you. Is that a year? You think or? it was a year. Good guess, Trevor, is but no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a quarter. Uh, one benefit wow. period is separated from another by 60 days in a row, not in a hospital or skilled nursing home. So, oh, you, so you could could, actually, okay. you could have five benefit periods in a single year. Or you'd year. have to pay 1200 to yourself. 1600 Sorry, 1600 sorry. Now, I've only met one person in my life that's ever had that. Yeah. But it but could it happens. Ha- it could okay. happen. Could okay. happen. Okay, so they have shorter, shorter refresh much periods. Much shorter. <laughs> yeah, much shorter. Okay, so that's part A for so hospitalizations. Part yeah, part B is more what you'd think of as conventional insurance. Um, there is a premium. For most people, it's going to be $174.70 a month in No matter 2024. what their health is? No matter what their health is. Okay. But... It might vary depending on what their income is. Oh, what do you mean? Well, depending <laughs> on how low your income is, it might be zero. If you're eligible for Medicaid. So Medicaid Medi- can pay for Medicare? Can, can, part B, premium. Part B. Or it may be some percentage of. See, I, don't, I would never want to figure this out myself. Or that's all we have. If, I know that's what I'm saying. If you've been like, successful, or if you were successful in 2022, okay, it could mean that instead of paying 174.70, you may be paying over 500 dollars a month for your part B because premium you made too much money. Because you made too much money two years ago. I get to pay for everybody else's health premiums. Lucky you. I know. I'm Lucky so you. happy. Okay, about it. so <laughs> we refer to that version of it as Irma. Okay. Income related monthly adjustment amount. You must have a designation for memorization because <laughs> I would never remember. All of hey, this you know stuff. all you how you know all the mortgage acronyms. Uh, it's, he knows. Oh, yeah. he I could, knows. I couldn't keep up with you on the mortgage front. <laughs> but uh, so you don't want to meet Irma. So when you roll that into retirement planning, and we're trying to look at most Americans where. Um, they have most of their net worth in two places, their house I was say their and home. their 401k yep. plan. And so as we look at the country and where it's at and where it's headed, Medicare is the biggest leak in the federal budget boat right now. Mm-hmm. That is the biggest single line item there as a category. They just seem to keep kicking that down the road, though, because they don't want to make people mad. Well, if you're a politician, your number you're one priority is to yeah. get reelected. And Term so, limits, hashtag. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but the ones that have to vote for that are the ones that are in there. I know. So I know, kind it's of ridiculous. A catch twenty two. Convention of states, hashtag. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, shameless plug. Same yeah. shameless plug. <laughs> so if we're doing Roth conversions, we got to be careful how we do that because if we're in too too high, if someone's under sixty five and they're on the marketplace because they retired young then that can cause them to have to repay a lot of premium subsidies on their tax returns. And if they're over 65, it can cause them to pay excess Part B premiums. So it's a a needle we're threading. And to me, like just hearing that, it's kind of like when you have complicated tax situations, you don't go through these things alone. Yeah. You don't be, just it, rely on well, it would be, can. turbo you tax. Can. It just turns out bad. It just turns out <laughs> bad. Exactly right. We're like, there's certain things in life I'm not going to do by myself. Taxes, sheetrock, <laughs> financial planning, you know, stuff like that. So these are really important <laughs> things. Like I mean, Sheetrock. Sheetrock. Yeah, sheetrock. <laughs> that is something you hire a professional. I've tried it. Okay. Like, I'm pretty good uh, at most things. Sheetrock's not one of them. I couldn't yeah. learn it, but... But it's it's kind of complicated, but it's nice to have somebody who knows how to help people through that. And you sit down and go, okay, what do you, I mean, most government programs, they kind of have a formula that they apply to people, right? Where it's like, you make this much money, you have to pay this much. and Yeah, no, it's hard and fast. Yeah. 
And then, you know, even once you've decided, okay, I'm just right in there in the sweet spot, I'm okay, I'm 174.70 a month for Part B, you still have to choose, well, what's going to be best for me? Should I go the traditional route where I'm going to opt for additional premium above Part B for a Medicare supplement plan, a prescription drug plan? Because I've heard a lot of people talk about those supplemental plans, but I don't know enough about them. Well, essentially the choice is this. Do I want to pay extra premium that I'm going to pay every month, even if I'm healthy and never see a doctor? Right. But with that plan, if I got super sick and had all kinds of weird, awful, expensive things happen to me, that's still all I'm paying. Yes, because it would be covered because you have that supplement. Yeah, yeah you have the okay. supplement plan, so you pay your premiums, that's what you pay. Done. Okay. Right? Or you can go the Medicare Advantage route where there's no additional premium beyond Part B, usually. But then I might have co-pays along the path with an out-of-pocket maximum mm -hmm. for the year. Okay. And in Utah, it's a little bit more traditional, yeah, more what you're used to with the group coverage. Yeah. So for most people, it's not a big deal. But the way the insurance companies make that work for them with the lesser amount that Medicare pays them to administer the program compared to what Medicare spends itself to administer the program. So Medicare's trying to save money. And the insurance companies want to make money. To make that happen, they do it through either an HMO or a PPO mm -hmm. delivery system where you have to play with in their network. Yep. Right? You so if go you go to, to a doctor, doctor for this amount. Yeah, if you go to if you go outside the network, if it's an HMO, they don't have to pay at all. Or if it's a PPO, they don't have to pay much. Yeah. And you're bearing that additional burden mm -hmm. up to the out of pocket maximum. <laughs> And so you just have to choose what's going to work best for you. Right. And part of that depends on where you live. Um, part of it depends on what health conditions. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have a specific health condition that you need a specific doctor, that's going to play a huge yeah. Yeah. Or if there's, role in the deciding. If there's like a illness that runs really heavily in your family and mm -hmm. there's a pretty and high you know percentage, that you might get yeah. it. Yeah. Like good looks for me, that's yeah. it's been a hard one. <laughs> well, We're thinking you know. more like... You know, die everyone has, or, it, it everyone is has hard, a burden It is carry. hard to handle sometimes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, sorry, my sarcasm. So I have it pink hair so sometimes, yeah. To, to take the... I'm just trying to make not everyone want me. Yeah. <laughs> take the... So, yeah, so, you know, with Medicare, it doesn't cost you any more to get somebody to help guide you through it. Um, and I know you, like, you've spent a lot of time understanding it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of your clients come to you specifically for that. So, you yeah. know... He's a great resource for that. So any of you looking, you know, to help your parents or to prepare for what you need to do, mm -hmm. you need to call Scott. How do they get in touch with you? 435-723-3370. Okay. And he can do Zoom meetings, in-person meetings. He makes it convenient for you and has free consults and mm -hmm. things like that. So and also your, your website, the Ask Scott Nelson. Yeah. Ask yeah. Scott Nelson. He may be doing a rebranding, but and we can redirect to it, so yeah, you'll be fine. A, yeah, we'll get you. So there. it's Ask Scott, normal spelling of Scott, and then N E L S O N. Just Correct. for those who don't want to make the initial phone call. Yeah, I, and you can it, actually schedule. Yeah, nobody appointments. got time for that. Yeah, you can actually schedule appointments. You can see my calendar. You can get a well, hold just of think, me. I'm just thinking for the way. introverts that may want to help their parents Some that yeah, don't so want to make phone calls. They don't want to talk on the phone yeah. yet. You know they're so. Okay. Anyway, trying to help make things better. Well, and that it's huge because a lot of Americans don't know these things and they're not prepared. And so I highly recommend you guys get in touch with Scott. So thank you for coming in today. We really appreciate it. I know I learned something for sure. And so hopefully everybody else yeah. did. Brain feels like it needs to explode a little bit. It's but, a little you know. bit. That's why we <laughs> put fine. it all there. <laughs> yeah. Because I can just sit, call Scott when those questions come up. Anyway, yeah. thanks yeah. for coming in. My pleasure. Appreciate you having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks.